Okay, the setup is changed to look at the screen. Uh, first thing first, we need to change the time base to have only 100 uh, millisecond. That's the, uh, the maximum limit that we could have with the logic analyzer in place. Uh, we could get rid of the analog outputs. It's, we know it works. Uh, and concentrate ourselves to the digital signal. Um, let's trigger on this time the uh, falling of the uh, clock. Serial clock is logic low, uh, so you need to have. Uh, uh, if you if you want to trace on it or trigger on it, you need to have that in place. Let's start the. Logic analyzer, click two time, uh, remove the unwanted trace. You could also switch to large. By the way, that's a trick. Once you uh, once you got your trace selected, you could change the place. Let's see, I could remove D7 will not be used, but you could once you've got the naming and things like that, you could select one trace and move it. Uh, let's force trigger. So we have a trace. So once you got all the trace in display, you could highlight one and move it. So in our case, we will highlight the serial clock. Let's put it here. Serial data, let's put it here and the rest of it is not useful so we could get rid of it so d6 d5 d4 d3 and d2 are removed and now we got only the two trays that we wanted otherwise at the right place as long as you don't change the naming and things like that they will stay there but if you do something they will drop down to or go to the top depending on the other uh, with the auto arrange auto setup i would say of the of this thing so let me try to reset so 100 millisecond trigger on the uh, signal and we got um the longest time possible to capture everything going to the signal clock the voltage is 0 to 5 as expected we don't want to have anything logic beyond 5.5 to fry, not to fry the logic board. But this is the maximum length in time that you could capture a logic signal. Uh, anything shorter is fine, but that's a maximum. Um, let's look at it in terms of sampling first. Uh, let me expand this thing to the center. It is there. Let me put this at the center. Now we'll look at what is the sampling that we got. So that good because it's a triangular shape. We expect to have a square shape. So this should be this. So there is a sampling problem here with the default. Let's go back to 100 millisecond. Uh, of course, you could will uh, reduce the window in time uh, if you wish to but we could also increase the memory uh, let's go to 10 meg if we still have the objective of capturing the ma maximum of time let me reset this thing 100 millisecond uh, the widest time that we could capture digital signal let's trigger again the shape will change now we got something slightly different. Let me do a reset again. Okay, we got something. Uh, I uh, contacted the probe, so the probe was affected by my finger. Um, let's zoom now to the traces. Now we got something more interesting. Um, and you could uh, maybe move the trace over the other and uh, and see if the timing is good one thing that 
is still important even though the trace seems to match the uh, we see clearly uh, an offset in time and let me show you what I mean by that uh, let's draw the cursor so the um, first the cursor we could move this one to uh, the level that we found on the previous video 1.30 let's say 134 this is where the logic analyzer will trade and now we can move this cursor over here and this cursor over here so there is clearly a delay between the time it should trigger and the time that it, it gets there so it's it's not a delay in the electronic it's just a sampling that is too low and creating this uh, timing issue uh, this is the lowest speed of i square c by the way this is 100 kilohertz let's see that 97 so how about 100 kilohertz so it's the slowest one uh, but we clearly need to do something not to have this uh, kind of offset so let's try again remove the cursor go back to the unnecessary 100 millisecond of maximum sampling and now let's increase the amount of memory to the maximum that we could have which is 25 and do this acquisition again i have to reset without touching anything else now we got the new traces and let's expand on it uh, and see how it looks okay so we are at uh let me go back I, I don't remember exactly what was the sampling so at time of sampling 160 nanosecond per point uh this is quite large but that's a maximum that we could get if you don't trade off the uh something else let's go to the cursor uh and see where we are so the triggering occur here and here but we see a small offset again so it it's too wide too slow as a sampling uh, but now let's do something more sensible instead of having 100 millisecond with 160 we know the only signal is over here so there's nothing before or after so we could change the timing to something like this now we got six nanoseconds per point that's a good uh, starting point even though we could reduce that thing to 10 meg at 10 meg we got 16 let's try that first so we are ready to trigger again but with different sampling so it's 10 times more than what we were having before I have to press the reset button now we get a new trace let's look at that so 16 nanoseconds per point and now it seems to be aligned let's go there look at the cursor again the cursor level is adjust to what we expected to trigger as a level 1.34 or something and now it's perfectly aligned so the sampling is good at 16 nanosecond per point but this is for one kilohertz pulse uh, let me remove the cursor let me show you something else that's part of the um, that's part of the uh, specification of i square c they could change speed over time depending on the uh, uh, each device that could listen or emit as long as they talk to each other they could change the speed 
to whatever they want. And we got an example of that over here. So the left part is with a clock of 100 kilohertz. But we got something interesting over here. And let's have a look at it. I have to turn the button in the right direction. So this is 1 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz. But we got something better here or faster. And let's have a look at it. So the shape is not as good uh, because the uh, Logic Pro it has um, a capacitance that you 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 have difficulty to remove. But basically, the the way the um, the uh, I square C work, there is a a, a pull up resistors with the capacitor that create those curve, and 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 the Logic when it active, it's put everything to the ground very fastly. And now if we activate the cursor with uh, the initial setup of, uh, well, zoom, one more, maybe two more. Yeah, two more is probably maximum to show the effect. So the triggering will again occur at the same place. And the up and down Again, we, we see some uh, delay between this time and the rising edge and the falling edge. If we want to look at the uh, frequency of this thing, that's the 400 kilohertz um, kind of uh, I square C that we could capture. Um, this was captured over, let's go back to time base that we were so it was 16 um, we could improve further either by increasing the memory at the expense of slowing down the scope now we got six we could also uh, decrease the width while well, we're, we're probably at the maximum let me put this over here. Six nanosecond with the, this time base. If I increase a little bit to two milliseconds for the entire window, I got everything in place. And now the sampling is two nanosecond. If I go back to 10 meg, it's six. And if I go to 25, that's a maximum sampling. Uh, that we could achieve with this two millisecond of uh, time base two, two millisecond per this per division ten division uh, to capture the entire event. Let's trigger again. So we got a bunch of new traces, uh, nicer nicer traces. Let's move to the right. Um, and explore oh the scope is now very 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 slow uh, because we it has to draw the 25 million point and it's very difficult so it's uh, you have to pick your poison if you need that okay but you have to be careful of the uh, the amount of work that the scope has to display this thing we are we are stop triggering i could even stop it here but you, you see when dragging, the shape is very slow. Now we got there, let's zoom on it. And try to put it over here so we could compare. So now we got something that is more aligned at this sampling rate uh, 10 nanosecond per point or three or two let's activate the cursor again uh, maybe one notch more of zoom yeah so triggering occur when the level of the analog reach 1.32 or something and now it's perfectly aligned with the square 
meaning that the sampling is fast enough that we don't have any uh, kind of a delay between the digital part and the analog part. And uh, it has some effect uh, if you want to do fast traces when you want to decode that thing. That will be the next uh, demonstration on this.